Hello YouTube, long time no see. I know it's been a while since my last video, it's been about three weeks now. Uh, usually I've been trying to get videos out every week or so, but you know, I've been moving into a new apartment uh, over the past week and uh, I've just been making some really big changes to the game and adding some new features that really just take a lot of time. Some I can't really promise a, a video to you guys every week or two, but I will of course do my best. Uh, this is, of course, what I've been working on uh, for the past two weeks or so. If you look at the change log, there's about a week in there or so of uh, classified information. Uh, that's when I was working on a feature that I'm not ready to show you yet. Uh, I think you guys will be really excited about it, but it's going to take me a while to do because it's a really big change to the game. Um, but it is going to be an exciting change. Uh, this is what I've been uh, most uh, excited to show you uh, right now because it's taken up the better part of two weeks uh, of development time for me. But what it is, is it's a world editor. Right now, all it is is a tree editor. You can only edit trees. Um, but the purpose of this is to make it really easy to modify and change the world. Uh, because before, in order to create new tree types, uh, and right now to create new biomes, you basically have to go into these files and just change variables. If you're familiar with the, the any file format that most games use, that's basically what you had to do, is go through and just change it by hand. And it was really monotonous and annoying. So instead, I have made this editor, um, and what it is using is the Awesomium uh, uh, S, S software development kit to uh, overlay a user interface um, over the normal game. So all the heavy lifting is done in C++, and what Awesomium is, is it's a, uh, it, it lets you run HTML for your, uh, your user interface and anything you want to do. So we have HTML, jQuery, uh, CSS, all this stuff, all this stuff you guys are probably familiar with for the user interface. And what that means is it's highly modifiable. It's really easy to change these things. Now, I am no uh, HTML guru. I actually had to start learning HTML and CSS and jQuery for this. So uh, a lot of the time uh, developing for the past week has just been learning how to use all the uh, scripting and all that. But I've kind of got a handle on it, and I kind of know what I'm doing now, and I've had some help from Sebastian and some other people. Um, oh, also, uh, before I forget, check out, uh, I'll put it in the description, check out Bam Yazzie's channel. He's been giving me a lot of help, and he's also, uh, we are kind of working together on a voxel editor for models and uh, for animations. He's done all of the work. It's his voxel editor. Uh, check out his channel. He's got some great stuff about it, and he's working on his own game right now as well. But he has given me permission to use the source, and... Uh, I'm kind of helping him, eventually I'm going to be helping him touch it up and make it much better. But anyways, enough rambling, on to the fun parts. So what this world, this tree editor does is it lets you uh, select a base tree, which these are all ones that uh, mostly Sebastian has made. For instance, here is a massive tree that he made. Um, and what you can do is you can tweak parameters. This is everything that makes up a tree. So if I want to change the height, I can just move this slider and then it will get smaller. Now, what these uh, two values right here mean are the minimum and the maximum. And what that is, what that determines is the height of the tree based on its age. So the youngest tree will have a block height of 63. The, the oldest tree will have a block height of 106. And this age uh, variable right here determines uh, what, basically this 37% means it's going to be 37% of the way between these two sliders, so it'll be about 70 something. And we can generate new seeds to get new trees. This one's got 74%, so it's a much older tree. And they generate pretty quick, they generate in real time. So let's go ahead and play with these and make our own. Um, oh, first let me show you some cool stuff Sebastian has uh, been working on. Sebastian made. Oh god. There we go. I have yet to implement any uh, kind of. Uh, like file dialogue here, I need to do that for sure. But uh, Sebastian made boulders. I know this is called the tree editor, but it actually can do much more. For instance, these boulders. Uh, you, you can create pretty much anything because you can change um, what block IDs uh, the wood uses. You can change a lot of variables about it, give it all these unique shapes. So we have boulders now. We have, uh, let's see, what else do we have? We have spikes, like big rock spikes. These are kind of cool, I like these. This could be used in some kind of uh, crazy mountain biome or something. And we can just make all sorts of crazy stuff with this. So let's try to make our own tree. Let's make something cool. Uh, 
We'll start with the blossom tree. Okay, this is a good one to, to start with. Also, you'll notice these dark spots. Those are just uh, lighting bugs. Don't worry about that. All right, so let's make an epic tree. We're going to make the maximum height, or the max, yeah, this is length. We need tree height. Let's make the maximum height pretty tall. Yeah, like 100 and something. Bring up the minimum height. There we go. That's pretty tall. This looks like something from Dr. Seuss. This is a good, good place to start. So let's modify some of the other variables. What if I want different shape leaves? Well, we have these leaf shape variables here. For the branch, we can do basic which is kind of what you would expect in most voxel games, and we have round. I like round for this tree. Um, we can also uh, apply a cap leaf shape. And what the difference is, the cap only happens at the very top. So if I turn off, oops, if I turn off branch leaves, then I can show you what the cap does. As you can see, the cap goes right up here on top. And that's useful for trees that have really weird uh, or really thick trunks, because the top of the trunk will be kind of kind of flat, usually kind of big and flat, it won't look very good. So if you just cap it with leaves, it looks much better. Anyway, so we can also make it have pine leaves, but that looks kind of weird. It looks like it's a big fuzzy tree. So we'll say none for that, and then we'll say round. All right, so this looks kind of cool. Let's change the branches a bit. Let's change the branch chance. Let's give us more branches. So we have top branch chance, which is the chance at the very top and we'll increase that so we have some more branches up there and then we also have a bottom branch chance now you'll notice these variables aren't grouped very well they're just sorted by uh, by alphabetical order if you have any ideas on better ways to sort them I'm gonna definitely rename some of the variables to try to group them better uh, please let me know about that let's see bottom branch length there we go make them longer bottom branch chance have more branches. Okay, we can also change other things. We can change where the branches start on the tree. You'll see at the bottom here we have pretty much no branches. We can actually change that with branch start. We can move it up so that the branches start way up there. We can move it down so the branches start down here. I like something like maybe that. That looks kind of cool. Now what if we want the tree to be wider? We can change the core width now we have a wider tree. Now core width is different from base width and base height. The core width is the core of the tree. A tree has a core and then it has outer wood. So if we say core width is really, really big, then it looks like a big square. The core is always uh, like a square shape. But if we want the tree to be more round, what we're going to do is reduce the width of the core, maybe make it about four, and then we will give it... Uh, width. So we can have base width, which is the base of the tree. We'll give it a bit more width. And you'll notice it just looks kind of weird down here. That's because the height of the base is not tall enough. There we go. So now the base is nice and thick. We could change the mid width and the top width as well. And basically what happens is when you change, for instance, the mid width, then you're going to get a bulge here in the middle. It sort of interpolates the width of the middle and the bottom and makes kind of a smooth transition between the two. I'll show you what that looks like. I'll give the tree a tumor. Let's see. I don't even know where my variables are. Uh, trunk mid width. Here we go. Right now it's quite small. If we make it huge, you see this bulge. You see it can. it's interpolating between the base and the top, so it kind of slopes outward. This is sort of how boulders were made. We made the middle thicker than the bottom and the top, and it just looks horrible, so we're not going to do that. But now you understand how it works. So, ooh, that's the wrong variable. All right, so this is fixed. What else do we have to work with? Well, we can do some crazy things, too. We can go look at droopy leaves. Droopy leaves are how we make willows. So if we want to turn those on, we just set this to a 1. And now we have a big droopy tree, like a big pink willow. But we can do more than that. We can we can actually change the slope of the leaves. We can make them stick straight out if we want to, as weird as that looks. This could actually come in useful. I could think of some people maybe making some weird alien trees that have leaves sticking straight out. Or you could even make this out of wood. Remember, you can change any of the block IDs to whatever you want. You could even make these out of water if you wanted to, I think. I'm not going to do that, though. Okay, so let's change that back down to something reasonable. 
we'll make it about 6. And we can also change the derivative of the slope. What did I do? Uh, here we go. We can change the derivative of the slope as well, and that will change how fast this slope changes. Because you'll notice this slope actually goes from um, you know, not slopey to very slopey. That's where the derivative comes in. But we'll do something like this. I really don't think it looks... I think it looks kind of cool, but I don't, this isn't what I want to go for. So what I want to do is reduce the length of the droopy leaves. We'll bring it way up closer to the tree. That looks kind of cool. I don't know. It looks, it looks very strange. Let's give it a little more slope. A little less slope, I should say. There. Okay, now we can generate new types of this tree. And you'll notice based on its age, for instance, this is basically a baby tree. It looks like a sort of, a, I guess, a baby epic tree. If we wanted to make the minimum range smaller, we could make this base much lower, and then our baby tree would literally be a baby tree. But that all depends on how you want to implement the tree. So as you can see, we have all these different kinds. And we can also mess with mushrooms. Let's see. Anyways, the, the basic idea here um, is that what you're going to be able to do is create your trees, and then you'll be able to click over to terrain, create your terrain, and you're actually going to be able to create the world. You're going to be able to modify it. You can even create your own worlds, share them online, share them with other players. And uh, this December, this will ship with the game, the free download of the game, and if you guys make things that, uh, that I like and that everybody likes, um, with my permission, I'll use it in the... With, with your permission, I'll use it in the game. And, you know, it's a good opportunity for you guys to kind of get in on the development here. That's why I'm making these tools. I'm making the tools so that it'll be very easy for pretty much anybody to just sort of do whatever they want to with the game. I'm trying to make this more into a game engine and less into just a game programmed from scratch. And I know this is getting to be a really long video. I do want to show you the giant purple mushrooms that you all know. So we can do some cool things with mushrooms too that I have not shown you. Where, here we go. All right, so we can change the length of the curl, which is basically the bottom slopey part. We can make it curl in. Right now you can't change the uh, slope of the curl. You can only change the length of it. That may change, but it's not really a super spectacular feature anyways. And then you can, of course, change the... Uh, here we go. You can change the width of the gills. So if you want more gills on the inside, you can change that. If you want, uh, if you want a sh different stretch for the cap, you can do that. So with zero, it's a semicircle. With negative one, it's a squished semicircle. With two, it really starts to stretch out. And now we have like a dome. We can do some weird stuff like. I don't know what you guys are going to come up with, but you could probably come up with things that don't look anything like a mushroom using uh, the mushroom algorithms. For instance, one thing we could do is change curl length to 30, and then, well, if we made it any longer, it would probably uh, be a full, a full sphere sort of thing. Let's see if we can actually do that. We have to change the leaf cap size. Oh no, it's broken. Ignore that. Alright, so I guess that's all I want to show you. Oh, there's one more thing I do want to show you. You can also look at the roots. It's not really a really big important thing, but sometimes you know you do want to care about the roots, because the player might be able to harvest resources from the roots. The roots will be made up of a different type of wood than the tree if you choose. You can increase the length of the roots with two variables, either with uh, the trunk bottom what is it bottom branch length that will increase the size of the roots they are basically branches that go downward which is why the bottom branch chance or the bottom branch length modifies it and if you want them to be independent of your bottom branches you can change a multiplier which is the root depth mult right here and we can make them really small or really 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 big if you want roots this huge um, if you make it too big, it will disappear because they will uh, the roots will actually probably go outside of the world. But anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, I don't know if I have anything else to say. Oh, uh, 
if you haven't seen Deep Tone, if, if you haven't seen any of Deep Tone Arsenal's videos, be sure to check out his channel. He's got some uh, good music there, and he's also got a new video showing uh, some stuff he's putting on iTunes, I think. Uh, so check that out in the description. Um, also, there is a official uh, Seed of Andromeda Facebook page. I'm a member, but I don't really get on it a whole lot. Uh, you can check that out on Facebook. Be sure to give us a like. Uh, yeah, that's all I can. That's all I can think of. Thanks for tuning in. I'll try to keep you guys better updated, and stay tuned for that super secret thing I've been working on that I think you are all really going to enjoy.